In the past, we've seen Konami re-release structure decks. This is not the first time that it's happened, and it probably won't be the last time. We've seen it happen with the Chaos Dragon structure deck, we've seen it happen with the Cyber Dragon structure deck, and the Blue Eye structure deck, and make no mistake, this is not a case where these structure decks are just sitting around in a warehouse. These are re-released products, and what that means is that even though this Gates of the Underworld structure deck looks very similar to what it looked like back in 2011 when it was first released, this is actually a revamped version. If we look inside the rule book should have the current rule book not the old 2011 one uh, maybe I'm wrong here but I don't think I am because uh, I talked to my locals and he, he was like oh yeah we're getting a new shipment of these gates of the underworld structure decks so this is something that Konami does consciously they for whatever reason I don't know why they picked the gates of the underworld structure deck this time but they sometimes every once in a while they'll re-release the structure deck put the new updated rule book in there and sort of uh, give players a new chance to have these cards so this says abandon all hope that's what your opponents will say when they drop their decks and flee in terror at the sight of these monsters. The most powerful lords of the Dark World are ready for battle inside this box, and you definitely want them on your side when they get out. Enlist these forces of Dark World into your deck, or else your opponent will do it first. And uh, Dark Worlds, this was a very, very hyped structure deck. Dark Worlds had already seen some success uh, as tech cards and as rogue options, which seemed kind of funny uh, thinking about in hindsight that Silva and Gold were both played as like side deck options back in the day kind of a whole story behind that but we won't get into that in this video but it's just kind of weird to think about that uh, even if the dark world strategy itself wasn't super popular that the gold and silver were pretty good as tech options uh, as we see the rule book uh version 9.1 which wait a second where are the there's no link summons so this is like a weird version of the deck where there's okay hold on i'm just trying to find here it says no link summons mentioned but there are what is this? When is this made? <laughs> I'm so confused. So pendulums were the most recent addition. What is what version are we on right now? I have to look that up. I'll put it on the screen right at this point in the video. I'm just very confused here. So this is a re-release. This is not what the edition of the rulebook was when this came out. Because back when this came out, there weren't pendulum monsters. This one is not updated through link summoning, which is very strange to me. So I'll have to look up. So maybe these have been sitting around a warehouse. Maybe they just got delayed for re-releasing them. I, I have no idea. I am very, very confused at this moment because uh, it is a new edition of the structure deck. It is a re-release, but it seems like a very delayed re release i'm not entirely sure how that happened but what i was saying about this structure deck is that when the dark worlds came out people were very very hyped this was uh, not quite when structure decks were uh, terrible i mean we had some good structure decks before this but this is one of the first times when they really doubled down on like okay you can build a competitive deck out of just a couple structure decks and some extra cards you might have namely i don't believe skill drain is in this but skill drain was a pretty important part of these dark world uh, decks that were being played but a lot of people were hyped for these and it was funny because uh, i think the hype of dark worlds was really their demise at least at the first YCS, or I think it was YCS at that point, it might have been Shaun and Jump Championship, um, that these were illegal at, because what happened was uh, no one really played Dark Worlds, and even the people that did play Dark Worlds, what would happen is that everyone was teching against them, they are citing Gemini Imps and all those crazy cards, Macro Cosmos, and then also when you played Mirror Matches, they were just awful, because if you like Dark World dealings and your opponent got their bonus effects off the Dark Worlds, it was just terrible, so uh, it was kind of a funny situation to happen with these, we have the uh, the map there that don't get out, and then we have the, the old set list shows you all the cards and deck shows you some slick combos so pretty good cards okay so now as i'm looking at this i am realizing that exceeds monsters were out when the structure deck came out they would have just been like brand new late 2011 but they wouldn't have been uh, the most like common thing here we wouldn't have seen a ton of them i think that both these sets were out or photon shockwave might have just been coming out the uh, official release date of this was october of 2011 so that would have been after generation force which would have been in august 2011 but i don't know around when Photon Shock would have come out. It was the next set or whatever. So Exceeds Monsters were very, very new when the structure deck came out. They weren't super popular, but you had some good rank fives. Uh, Tyrus and Adri or Adrius, whatever, were both pretty good additions to this deck. So you had Gold and Silva to make them. But that is kind of interesting. So I'm a little bit wrong in my uh, timeline here when I was talking about the this the rule book here. Exceeds Monsters would have been out, but Pendulums definitely would not have been, which is kind of where we're at. Um, just because these Pendulum Monsters, they, they were still years away. That was like 2014, late 2014. So uh, uh, this structure deck is still like three years after when this structure, when this, or when this, uh, 
uh, rulebook is still three years after when the structure deck itself came out. So it's kind of interesting. I don't know where in the timeline these fall. These are definitely like newly released, newly re-released, but it seems like they were uh, this were set up a while ago. Um, anyway, though, let's take a look at the deck itself. We can kind of talk about some of the good slash bad cards in this deck. Um, certainly, though, a lot of the new cards, especially the field spell and Grapha, were huge additions to the Dark World strategy. So we have Grapha, Dragon Lord of the Dark World. Oh my gosh, this card was so annoying to deal with back in 2011. Um, even if this wasn't the best deck, this card was still so frustrating, especially when they had Skill Jam on the board. You can just summon it every turn, and probably most importantly, when this thing is discarded, you get to target an, uh, any card your opponent controls and destroy it, versus a lot of the other Dark World cards, which are a lot more specific, and I'm sure we'll see some of them in this uh, structure deck as well, like green and all those ones, which only destroy like a back row or a monster or something like that. This one can destroy anything. That was super good. We have obviously Snow. You can kind of see here a lot of these new cards, almost all of the new cards that were included in here, which are the holo holographic cards and then Gates, they were actually played. Like these were really solid additions to Dark World deck. So Snow, Search as Anything, really cool card, obviously. This one, so really Guru of the Dark World, not really played too much, but it's still like an interesting effect. Um, the main problem with this card is that it does sort of require, I mean, it's cool because it helps you set up your, your bonus effects on your guys, but it doesn't really do anything by itself, so it wasn't usually played. We have Zur, Knight of the Dark World. Pretty cool normal monster. We have Range, Gatekeeper of Dark World. We got a couple Dark World normal monsters. Scar, Scout of Dark World. Wow, broken. It's just a Mystic Tomato for uh, Dark Worlds, except it doesn't even special summon it. It just uh, adds a turn. So it's more like a Sangin, I suppose, but it has to be stood by battle. So that's why I call it a tomato. Uh, so here we go. I think this is a show green. Yeah, so these two are like um, both objectively much worse than Graffa, right? Because these cards only destroy a monster or a spell or trap card, but Graffa can destroy both and also has a revival effect. Um, but they're kind of neat cards. I mean, this is when you have to realize these cards were released. Uh, before Grapha, so they weren't as bad in comparison, but they weren't really played. I mean, Dark World just as a deck wasn't really played when it first came out, so it's whatever. Uh, we have Brow Huntsman of Dark World. What a fantastic card. Obviously, um, some of you guys might be recognizing these cards, specifically these uh, three cards. They were played in the Danger Dark World FTK when that was around, and that was pretty crazy. These are some of the cards that you could play in there. The Snow Search, the Grapha to get the loop going, or I really could search whatever you wanted, and they uh, combo very nicely with the Danger Monsters. Obviously, I, I shouldn't have to mention it, but the uh, the Dark Worlds do not trigger off of being discarded for cost. That is like their big downside. Uh, later on, we would get cards that would trigger off of getting discarded for cost, like the Danger Monsters, but these ones do not trigger off of that, so you have to discard them for a card effect. And, uh, you know, nowadays it's not so hard to figure out, like, what's a cost, what's a card effect. Like, you still have to know that's, that's how these cards trigger. Um, and back in the day, like, cards were just didn't have problems solving card text, so it was way harder to figure out, like, which cards actually discarded for cost, which cards discarded for effects. And we have Brawn, Mad King of Dark World. We have Silva in Gold, presumably. Two of the better Dark Worlds, at least in a dedicated Dark World deck. They're just big monsters that you can special summon. Overlay for rank 5 is pretty darn good. And then we have Rainbow, Overlord of the Dark World, which was the boss monster before they had Grapha, but it wasn't really played. It wasn't as important. I remember playing Dark Worlds back in the day. The main problem with this card is that this one has to be discarded by an opponent's card effect to get the big effect, and uh, that's uh, really hard to do. I mean, you have cards like Dark Deal, which I'm sure are probably in the structure deck, but it's still not like the most consistent thing and then we have uh this guy and not really played trigodia pretty good addition this was a, a card that used to be very hard to get so it's cool to actually see it in so many of these structured decks once they first started reprinting it we have sangin with the old effect if when this card sent from the fields of the graveyard at one monster with 1500 or less attack from your deck to your hand um i guess that kind of dates this right because it, this puts it i mean we already knew i think sangin came out before the, the new version came out before link summon I, if i'm correct i might be wrong there uh, but we at least know that i mean this, this structure deck is um, two years late, right? Or one year late, just because this doesn't have the uh, new version of Sangin's effect. I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of a weird spot. Like, if you have a structure deck that you're re releasing, but one of the card's effects has changed, like, do you put that card in there? Or you change its effect? You put it for something different? Kind of hard on Konami's end. Uh, Nudoria, Goblin King, one great card. We have Grave Squirmer, pretty cool card. It was printed as a super rare first. This was, I think, the first uh, common reprint. We have Card Guard, pretty cool card in uh, Battle Pack 3. I always fit in a Battle Pack 3 reference. If I pull a Battle Pack 3 card, this is uh, one of the better cards that you can draft in that set, so that's kind of cool. Battle Fader, only because it's a fiend. Then we have another new card, Gates of the Dark World. Oh my gosh, this revitalized the entire strategy. It, it really is insane like how good of uh, legacy support these three cards were. Like Snowgrapha and Gates are all staple three of. They're basically like what the Dark World deck is known for these days. I mean, they still play like uh, three copies of all of these if you're going to play Dark Worlds in 2019. I 
guess. But um, other than that, though, like the, these are like the main things that people know Dark Worlds for, and a lot of these original Dark World cards aren't played that much. But this was such oh my gosh, the support is just so good. It really does elevate the mechanic. It gives you an extra draw, it gives you attack points, it gives you a discard. It's just oh, these cards were so good back in the day. It's crazy. Then we have a uh, Dark World Lightning, one of the uh, original ways to discard the Dark Worlds and actually trigger their effects. Uh, Gateway to Dark World two of those for me dark world dealings insanely good reprint is this card still expensive i don't know it definitely shot up in price when uh, danger dark world was uh in the format but this card is uh for a very long time was e even expensive with this common version it was like five to six dollars which is pretty insane for a structure that common we have allure of darkness which was not the first reprint the first one was a super rare and one of the special editions um so this is just the first common reprint i believe of allure of darkness pretty exciting though once again i think <laughs> both these cards are uh still pretty valuable or at least they were back when ninja dark world was being played and everyone like needed those cards card destruction see when this was printed it was legal then it got banned a couple years after two years after in 2013 and now it's back so now you can actually play this card and we have terraforming dark eruption fantastic card pretty cool uh, this card never really caught on cards that added from the graveyard are always a little tricky to use but this one i always thought was a lot better than people gave credit for then we have dark scheme which is not very good this is not a new card your opponent can discard one card to negate this card's effect otherwise both players discard two cards Cards, then draw two cards so the main problem with dark scheme is that to activate this card both players have to have at least two cards in their hand which means if they want new cards they'll just let it resolve but if they don't want new cards they can just discard one of the two cards that they have and then negate its effect and it's uh, obviously they're just going to negate it almost every single time so this card not very good i mean uh, i mean <laughs> i would say three out of four new cards being really really solid is definitely a good number to have the forces of darkness deck devastation virus oh man what a good card eradicator epidemic virus pretty cool mind crush is obviously before a uh, full force virus but this is actually one of the uh, the easiest ways to get eradicator uh, maybe not two stakes it was reprinted in the legend collection kaiba but it's still a pretty cool card um, that sees play every once in a while we have mind crush oh man good old mind crush because uh one of the things you could do back in the day with this card was that you could mind crush call obelisk the tormentor a card that you know your opponent would not be playing and then they would have to reveal their hands so you get some information then also you discard one of your dark world monsters pretty darn cool that does trigger the dark world pretty cool dark deal this is one of the ways that uh, i used to when i played dark worlds before the structure deck way back in the day whenever they first came out and i was just a, a little casual player um dark deals like the way that you triggered their bonus effects because it turned your opponent's normal spell into a spell that discarded a card from your hand transmigration prophecy that's kind of a transmig <laughs> The Transmigration Prophecy, kind of a weird addition to this deck. I don't know how that really fits in. Escape from the Dark Dimension. Obviously, this fits in because it uh, combos, quote-unquote combos, with the field spell by banishing your cards. And then, oh man, the last card, Dark Bry. Why no one plays Dark Bry? This is kind of a weird addition. I think the idea here is probably just like, oh, you can give your opponent a card so you can activate your discard effects, but that is uh, not very good because you could have just not given them the card and then discard the cards they already have in their hand. Because if your opponent has no hand, you're probably doing all right because then they have no cards to actually defeat you so that's uh, pretty good um anyway though that is the dark world structure deck this is a real throwback from 2011 uh once again i don't know when this was supposed to be re-released it seems like uh it was a little bit late but it is definitely a re-release like i said there was no pendulum monsters when this structure deck came out so it's uh we at least know that structure deck was re-released or planned for re-release three or four years after this actually did come out so i don't really know where in the timeline this was supposed to be released but i guess we get it now and it's kind of interesting to look back and see that even a re-release release was delayed uh, coming to the actual stores but uh, anyway i'll see you guys later thank you so much for watching today's video goodbye